This is our fifth time. I wouldn't have dreamt of what I learned here. This encourages you and inspires you. And it's so relaxing and the food is great. <laughs> I love retreats at sea. And I will do it again. And you should be here. Holy Trinity is at work full time here. Pope Francis' approved declaration on blessing same-sex couples has set bishops against bishops. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Militants Room correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, when it comes to interpreting and implementing the declaration that came out uh, Monday from uh, Cardinal Fernandez on blessing same-sex couples, uh, the bishops seem to really be at odds. What are we looking at out there? And Brad, this is precisely what I have been predicting for a very long time. We are seeing unfolding before our eyes the balkanization of the global Catholic Church. We have seen a civil war erupt uh, between bishop and bishop. And uh, a very telling example of that is how uh, the bishops of Malawi and in Africa and uh, Kazakhstan and Asia have come out, you know, stridently against Pope Francis's uh, uh, decree, uh, but the European bishops, like the Swiss bishops and the Austrian bishops, are supporting it. So we are not very different from a, a situation that the Anglican Communion has found itself in for the last couple of decades. Now this really harkens back for me covering the whole Amoris Laetitia thing, because how you give communion to the divorce and civilly remarried. Uh, everybody was at odds over that. We just kept reporting ad nauseum. This bishop says you can, this bishop says you can't. Uh, but let's break this particular one down. Let's start with the African bishops. Uh, what are they actually saying? Well, the uh, Bishops' Conference of Malawi issued a statement uh, yesterday and uh, they explained uh, in the first five or six paragraphs the intention, as they interpreted, of uh, the Pope's uh, declaration. And uh, they go on to say this, uh, they said, to avoid creating confusion, blessings of any kind for same-sex unions of any kind are not permitted anywhere in Malawi. So very, very direct and very strong statement. Now, of course, they're not talking necessarily just blessing the union, but they're talking about these people who are in unions, correct? Absolutely. So if two homosexuals come up to a, a priest, uh, you know, they come up together and they say, Father, you know, please bless us, the first person plural uh, pronoun used here, uh, the priest, according to the directive from the Malawi bishop, is supposed to categorically say no. Okay, well, let's move over to uh, uh, Kazakhstan. The, there's a tough statement came out by those bishops as well. Uh, what are they saying? And uh, this is from uh, the Metropolitan Archbishop Thomas Peter and his auxiliary uh, Archbishop Schneider, uh, uh, who is, uh, you know, as we know, uh, the Bishop of St. Mary's uh, Diocese in Astana, Kazakhstan. Now, the statement put out by these bishops is a very, very cutting indeed. It talks of Pope Francis's declaration as a great deception, quote unquote. It says that this declaration directly and seriously contradicts divine revelation and the uninterrupted practice of 2000 years of the church. It also goes on to say that this is uh, a serious abuse of the holy name of God. Basically saying that, you know, they have violated that great commandment, uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And uh, the document concludes by rebuking Pope Francis uh, and telling him that he is wrong on this and asking him to withdraw this document before there is more serious damage 
down to the trash. Now, uh, I guess to be fair, they're, they're looking at the uh, idea that if a couple comes up, they're not repentant, they're not contrite, they're not seeking God's help. Uh, and Fernandez kept trying to put in there that, oh, yes, if they're coming up for a blessing, that this is what they're doing. But if a couple comes up for the sake of we don't want to legitimize that or affirm them in their relationship, as uh, Ratzinger had said before, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, before he became Benedict XVI, said you can't bless the relationship. Uh, 2021, God can't bless sin. Uh, not only the union, but this relationship, this ongoing relationship of people who aren't repentant by any means because they're coming up as a couple. Uh, if they're looking at that particular problem, which seems to us, I mean, you and I both would think that the majority of couples coming up as a couple aren't coming up and saying we were going to separate. We're actually wanting to be blessed in our relationship, uh, whether we have a union or not. Um, but, and, and that's what they're saying is really the rub here. But to be fair, Archbishop Tomas and company are also saying that they would give a blessing to anyone who is truly uh, seeking uh, help, correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, let me quote their words, in fact. Uh, they say, it goes without saying that every sincerely repentant sinner with the firm intention to no longer sin and to put an end to his public sinful situation, such as, for example, cohabitation outside of a canonically valid marriage, union between people of the same sex can receive a blessing. So you're right, Brad. Uh, if two individuals who have been living in sin, which is what this is all about, you know, uh, the euphemism irregular uh, uh, relationship is basically a euphemism for uh, living in sin. And if these two people no longer want to live in sin and would ask for the grace of God to now live a holy and Christ-like life, they are most welcome to come forward for a blessing, uh, the bishops of Kazakhstan say. So in that sense, I'd almost argue that they're keeping what Fernandez uh, has been winding through there, uh, you know, saying, well, if someone's really seeking the blessing and helping of God, you know, and they're saying, well, yeah, we'd bless somebody like that. But if you have a couple out there, you don't want and legitimize it. Fernandez is saying you can't legitimize it with, uh, you know, having your stole and ceremony and all this and any liturgical thing. Uh, and they're saying, well, even if they're coming up as a couple and the priest himself is saying, uh, you know, it doesn't do, it doesn't do due diligence and say, well, what are we blessing here? Are we blessing your relationship that you go on living this way? Just have more peace with that? Or are we saying that you're blessing, getting a blessing to actually live according to uh, you know, the, the commandments, uh, the Ten Commandments, and no extramarital sex or anything. So it seems like the priest has to really do due diligence at the time when anybody comes to him for, for whatever type of thing along those lines. Um, Jules, you said yesterday that priests would be forced, this may have result in priests being forced to bless any and all same-sex couples, regardless of their intention or affirmation or anything, who come forward, repentant or not. Uh, and it seems this third group of bishops that you brought up, the Austrian uh, bishops, have actually proved you right. What are they saying? Well, uh, very disturbing reports from Austria, Brad, uh, that the Archbishop of the, and the head of the Austrian Bishops Conference, Archbishop Franz Lechner, um, has basically said that, uh, you know, he was asked this in an interview, and he said, basically, you can, you, meaning a priest, can no longer say no when a same-sex couple comes and asks you for a blessing. Now, there's been a bit of kerfuffle over this because he was then later asked by a Swiss Catholic uh, uh, portal if he really meant that, and he fudged a bit, and he said, you know, well, you know, you can't oblige somebody to, you know, bless another person, that sort of thing. But you can see where this is all leading uh, with uh, bishops who are pushing this agenda particularly in places like Germany and Austria, uh, getting very uh, upset if a lone conservative clergyman somewhere in the sticks uh, decides not to go along with this agenda. Now, there was also uh, 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 Archbishop Lasecki, Milwaukee. There was a Chaldean bishop here, uh, Kalabat, that were both talking about in the individual sense. If somebody in an individual, you know, if they were an, a person in an individual, as an individual comes up, 
to be blessed, uh, you know, and seeking to do God's will and all this, that they, you know, would extend the blessing. Um, but that's really not what Fernandez was talking about, because Fernandez right off the top talks about couples in irregular unions and those in same-sex um, uh same-sex couples. So we're talking about couples. And he talks about that several times throughout the document, well, right? Yeah. In the context of a couple Absolutely. coming forward. Absolutely. And uh, I was talking to a Latin scholar and an Italian uh, this morning, Lorenzo Murrone. And Lorenzo was telling me how uh, the word copia repeatedly pops up. Either he was reading the Italian version, which is the original, and he's saying in almost you know all cases uh, we use the word copia in Italian to refer to romantic relationships between two persons. Uh, so uh, the Italian media, of course, is running with this idea that the Vatican has now approved, uh, you know blessings for couples in uh, romantic, sexual, whatever relationships. Uh, interestingly, the Swiss bishops have come up with their statement, uh, not just supporting uh, Pope Francis, but applauding this new declaration. And believe it or not, uh, their statement has an image of a homo, it has a homo erotic image of two men, the faces of two men coming together very closely, almost kissing each other. And this is in the background of, against the background of a church. So, I mean, you know, for the Pope's plainness out there, you can very well tell what the world and the church, particularly the ecclesiastical hierarchy, pushing the agenda all this while. In fact, my sources in Rome are now telling me that the reason Pope Francis has issued this document is because uh, sites like Church Militant and others were constantly raising the question, why is he not disciplining errant uh, German and Flemish bishops for so flagrantly violating, uh, you know, Catholic teaching on homosexuality when they, they blessed uh, gay couples en masse in three seasons. So uh, uh, now, of course, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the bar is open for 24 hours a day. Yeah, and again, if you know, if I was a uh, upstart young priest, and you know, a couple came to me like that, I would have to say, well, what are we blessing here? Are we blessing your relationship? Are you guys intending to seek God's grace to somehow be strong enough to separate and all that? Uh, if that's what you're seeking, then I'll individually bless each of you, but not as a couple, because the optics there. Fernandez is worried about the optics. We don't want to legitimize anything. So blessing them as a couple, uh, you know, in private, singularly who express intentions of wanting to do God's will with the rest of their life, uh, of course. And that's uh, Kazakhstan Bishop said the same thing. Anybody seeking a blessing for that? So if that's the interpretation given to Fernandez, which is everybody saying, oh, that must be, but then why is this copie? Why is it a couple coming up? Where is the priest doing his due diligence, or is that just assumed that he will uh, do due diligence and find out what are we blessing? Are we really just affirming you and your um, chasteness, or are we actually... Uh, trying to bring you into a, 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 a fuller realization of living the Ten Commandments. Uh, Jules, finally, uh, your favorite pro-LGBT priest out there, the illustrious Father James Martin, uh, he's blessing the, the copie, the uh, romantic couples out there. Tell us about that. Well, I quite like Father James Martin. Uh, he is very honest, you know. He doesn't hide uh, what his real agenda is. I, I, I'm, I'm not being facetious here. Uh, and also, he is a master at using the media. I mean, uh, you know, as someone from a media background myself, secular media background, I was absolutely, you know, uh, uh, overawed, by the way, when I saw that he'd managed to get the New York Times to a report on this story, he actually phoned this couple, uh, Jason as Tidal Jack and his husband, so-called Damien Steidel Jack. One is 44 and the other is 38. They live in Manhattan, West Side. He phoned them and he said, hey, would you guys like 
a blessing. You know, I can't give you a formal liturgical blessing, but I can bless you. So don't wear a suit and a tie and, you know, uh, don't let's not pretend that it's a marriage. Uh, they are already married, by the way. This is a Catholic couple, Brad, who are civilly married as husband and husband, man and man. And uh, uh, they get the New York Times, uh, great photographer there, and they get these uh, picture whole story in the New York Times on this. Uh, and uh, Father James Martin, guess what? We are talking about non-liturgical blessings, Brad. Father James Martin uses the most famous and the most historic liturgical blessing that has been used by Jews and Christians for the last 4,000 years, depending on when you date the passage from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And if that is not liturgical a liturgical blessing, my name is not Jules Gomez. Yeah, and, and it, you know, it really wasn't done in private. You know, you get the New York Times and all over social media there, and you see a Catholic priest in front of a uh, married gay couple and giving them a blessing like that. How are the optics not going to be that you're legitimizing this? Whether you have your stole on or not, whether it's in a church or not, uh, you know, it's just the optics there. So I would say once again that that would violate Fernandez's statement, you know, um, that um, he's actually giving bad optics to this, causing scandal out there, and scandal at least to the couple themselves, that, the, uh, that they actually can go to hell, that they will actually spend an eternity separated from God if they continually to live their uh, unchaste lifestyle, uh, as all of us would. Uh, and that actually comes from St. Paul uh, himself in the Bible. So they'll have to, you know, have to answer for that on Judgment Day. Well, in 1973, Our Lady of Akita, in an approved apparition, actually said the work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinal against a cardinal, a cardinal opposing cardinal, and bishop against other bishops. Uh, was she speaking about these times? I don't totally know, but we certainly do see some bishops against bishops out there and cardinals against cardinals, and it seems like something worth contemplating because Our Lady of Akita went on to say, if men do not repent, there will be a punishment greater than the deluge. Uh, deluge, the fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. So not the end of the world, but it sounds like we might be getting, uh, want to get things straightened out here anyway. So uh, Jules, thank you so much for staying on top of this really controversial story. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. This show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. 